everyone. In this lesson, we're going to look at the geography of the United Kingdom. And we're also going to look at some culture related to all the different terms we use to describe Great Britain, England, all these different words, when do we use them? So we're going to break it down and look at that. Let's start with the name. The official name is United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. But often we just say UK because it's such a long country name. So we just say UK. I drew a map. My map is not to scale. And I tried my best, it was, but it was hard to do it with the pens on the board. So we're going to show you a correct map. We've got England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. And the dotted line shows where Northern Ireland ends. This part is part of the United Kingdom. This part is not. More on that later. So the UK is a sovereign state, or we could say a sovereign country. This means that they make all their own laws and they govern themselves. So the UK is a sovereign state or a sovereign country. But the reason that's confusing is that we, when we're talking or when we're describing a place in the world, we talk about Scotland, England, Wales, and Ireland as being countries. So you think, is if the UK is a country, are Scotland, England, Wales, and Ireland also a country? Well, they are, but they don't make their own laws. So we have a word for it, we can call them constituent countries. We can say England is a constituent country of the United Kingdom. We can say Scotland is a constituent country of the United Kingdom, etc. Okay, now it gets more confusing because when we're talking about the UK, we can say it's made up of those countries, Scotland, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. We can also say it's made up of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Great Britain is this landmass, this island shape here, and Northern Ireland is part of the landmass, the island of Ireland. So if we put this bit and this bit together, we get the United Kingdom. Great Britain has three constituent countries. Remember, this is Great Britain, Scotland, England, and Wales make up Great Britain. Britain, now we're getting smaller. This is Britain, England, and Wales. So I can say I'm from Britain because I'm from, I was born about here in London. So I can say I'm from Britain. Now we have another term called the British Isles. The British Isles is a geographic term. So we use it to describe a place on the map. And the British Isles would include Everything we see here, um, actually perhaps ex except these islands. These islands are called Jersey and Guernsey and they're closer to France. But the British Isles could describe everything here in a geographic sense. And I wasn't able to draw all the islands, but there's actually over 6,000 islands up in Scotland, some down here as well. So many, many islands, but the trouble with that term to say the British Isles is that um, some people in Ireland don't like that term to describe, to include them, because it makes it sound like Ireland is British, even though Ireland is independent. Ireland is a sovereign 
country by itself. So some people object to calling this the British Isles. If you do object to calling it the British Isles, you can say the North Atlantic, I can never say this word, archipelago, archipelago. And this means like collection of islands. And the place in the world is in the North Atlantic. Right, so now, I uh, already mentioned it a bit, but the Republic of Ireland, the Republic of Ireland is not part of the United Kingdom and it is a sovereign state. So Ireland, they make their own laws there, they have their own government. They're a completely separate country and a separate state to the United Kingdom. Next, it's important to point out that England is not the same as, as saying the UK or Great Britain because sometimes people can put that idea together in the head that England represents all of it. Perhaps because the government is in London, people might think, oh, England, you can say England to mean all the countries, but it's, it's not correct to say that. Also, something I want to say about Isle of Man. This is the Isle of Man. And about the Ballywicks of Jersey and Guernsey, which are down here. So these islands are not part of the United Kingdom. But we have the same monarch at the moment, that's the Queen. So we have the same Queen as them, but they're not part of the UK and they can make up their own laws and they can govern themselves and the laws are different. So they, they run themselves one way and in the Isle of Man they run themselves in another way. So I, I think that in the United Kingdom we've got one of the most complicated ways to describe our geography. When we come next, we're going to look at the more cultural differences between the different parts of the United Kingdom. I want to add a note that this, I'm filming this in 2017, so things that I'm talking about here could change and that depends on things like, does Scotland want to have its own independence from the United Kingdom? And if they have a referendum, if they vote, would they want to leave? So at the time of making the video, this is how things are in the UK. And I'm going to look at what the countries of the UK share and after what's different about them. So starting here, everybody born in one of the countries of the UK gets a passport that's exactly the same, same colour. And on the passport, it says British citizen. Now, I'm English and my passport is a burgundy colour and says British citizen. But I found out that if you're Welsh or you're Scottish, you might like to buy a unofficial cover for your British passport so that it looks like you've got a Welsh passport. Now, it wouldn't be accepted when you go to present your passport, but perhaps that would you would like, you'd like that idea of having a separate passport. So you can purchase such things on the internet if that's what you're after. Next, we have the same official and national language, which is of course English, and I'm speaking now in English to you. We have the same government, and the government is in Westminster in London, the Houses of Parliament. So where the laws are made, in Westminster, they are sovereign over all the laws made in... Okay, I was going to mention it later, but Scotland and... There are some devolved governments in the countries of the UK, in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. So they can make some laws about some issues for themselves, but even, even though they have their own governments, the government in Westminster in London is sovereign. 
So what they say has the most power over the other government, okay? We share the same monarch at the moment, that's Queen Elizabeth II. We share the same flag, which is the Union Jack flag. We use the same money, which is, well, we use the same currency, which is the great British pound, sterling. We share the same national anthem, which is God Save the Queen. And in the Olympics, everybody in England, Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland can compete under Team Great Britain if they choose. Now, this is an unusual choice of name for the team of the Olympics, because if you remember, Great Britain doesn't include Northern Ireland. So, where do Northern Ireland compete in the Olympics? Well, they can choose to be part of Team Great Britain or they can choose to be in Team Ireland if they want. So, they get a choice. What's different between the countries of the UK now? So, we share the same currency, Great British Pound Sterling, but if you go to Scotland, or Northern Ireland, I forgot to write there, Northern Ireland, they have different banknotes. So their money actually looks different or some of their money. You will, in Scotland, you'll often still see English money. If you come down from Scotland with your Scottish money and try and buy something in a pub or a fish and chip shop in England, you will be looked at very suspiciously with your Scottish money and people will be checking it, holding it up and they won't want to accept your Scottish money here. It is legal to accept it, but it's not something that we see that often in England. So be prepared for some um, suspicious looks if you want to pay with the Scottish money. What's different also is, okay, we all speak... English, but the dialects can be so different that when if you're speaking to somebody up in Scotland or you're speaking to Northern, someone in Northern Ireland or Wales even, they can sound so different. It's like a different dialect of English. But in some cases, it's also, in some cases, it's also a different language. If you go to Wales, Many people in Wales speak Welsh and things like their road signs in Wales are in two languages at the same time. They have um, two official languages. They have In Wales, they have Welsh and they also have English. In Northern Ireland, a percentage of the people will speak Gaelic. Now, there, I'm not going to talk about the cultural differences, but I will say that there is a sense of a different culture or a different identity that people have in the different countries of the United Kingdom. So an English person considers themselves to have a different culture to a Scottish person, and a Scottish person feels different to a Welsh person. And again, they feel different to a Northern Irish person. So although everybody has the same passport that says British citizen, there are differences between the country that people are aware of and are often proud of the differences between their countries also. The countries of the United Kingdom have their individual flags, which you may see at things like football competitions. And together, when you put these flags on top of each other, they make up the Union Jack flag, that famous flag that you're used to seeing. However, I must add something here. It's not all the countries. It's an old flag. So what it represents is the countries a long time ago. And that was when England, Scotland and Ireland were in a union and that's what the Union Jack represents. You might ask, well, why isn't Wales in there? That's because at that time, Wales was, wasn't considered an independent country. It was just 
part of England back in those times. And you might also say, well, why don't we change the national, uh, the Union Jack and put a Welsh dragon on it? Or why don't we change it because it includes the whole of Ireland? That's a good question. Many people argue about such things. And um, perhaps because the Union Jack is such a, a well-known symbol and many people, even people not from the UK, would like to buy souvenirs and T-shirts with the Union Jack on. Perhaps for those reasons, people don't, the government doesn't think about changing it. That's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. Moving on to national anthems. God Save the Queen is for everyone. Everybody in the UK can sing that as their national anthem. However, the Welsh also have a Welsh national anthem, which they may prefer to sing. This is in the Welsh language. Mayhen Vlad Fai Nadal. I have no idea how to pronounce it in Welsh, but that's theirs. Scottish people do not have their own official national anthem. Yet, they do have an unofficial one, which is Scotland the Brave. England and Northern Ireland do not have their own separate individual national anthems, either official or unofficial. They don't have. Also, all these countries have their own football teams and they compete as themselves in the big football competitions. So considering what's, what the countries share and what's different, I want to talk lastly about, raise questions of identity about what does it mean to be an English person or, or a Scottish person or, versus a British person. And one way to look at that is to look at the data of the 2011, 2011 census. This is something that happens every 10 years where the government asks people lots of questions and they collect information to see how, how are people changing, how do they live their lives differently. And some of the questions in the census ask people about their identity. So they will ask them, do you feel English or do you feel more British? So here are the statistics from that census. census. Back then in 2011, 60% of English people said they consider themselves to be English only. So these people do not consider themselves British. In their minds, they don't have so much to do with Scotland or Wales or Northern Ireland. Yeah, they're in the UK, but they don't consider themselves British as if we're all together in a group. It's like English first. 62% of Scottish people consider themselves to be Scottish only. So that's slightly more than in England. And this is an interesting thing to think about because there are people in Scotland who wish for their own independence from the United Kingdom. So they would like to separate from the United Kingdom and many of them would like to join the European Union on their own and not be part of the United Kingdom. So a slightly high, we could, we could say if we, com, if we compare the percentages there, that in Scotland, people are slightly more, what would you say? Would it be patriotic, love of their own country or nationalistic? loving their Scotland, um, their country first before the United Kingdom. And 58% of Welsh people consider themselves Welsh only. Now that's kind of a surprise to me because in my life experiences, those times when I have met Welsh people, I, okay, I'm making it sound like a rare th thing. I've met many Welsh people, but in my experience, they tend to mention Wales a lot and the Welsh language and what it's like in Wales and how Wales is different. So I would have thought based on my experience that there would be more people in Wales 
who consider themselves only Welsh or Welsh first. So now I want to mention the difference between uh, who's who's saying they're British and who's saying they're not British. So 14%, only only 14% of white British ethnicity say that they're British. Okay, so I'll, I'll break that down. Someone who lives in England, Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland is who looks white and has, as far as I know, haven't come from somewhere else, only 14% of those people would say that they're British. They would say, they would put their own English or Scot- Scottish or Welsh first. Whereas younger, the younger generation, the younger people of today and more people who live in cities where it's a lot more diverse as people who've immigrated from other countries and their parents before them or grandparents before them. In the cities, a high proportion of people will say that they're, they have the British identity. Um, so just going back to a point about this, if it's the 14% is, um, if you think about it this way, the older, much older generation, they were alive during the war. Uh, was some of them as some of them are still alive? They're still living, so they remember a different time, and they remember a different kind of Britain and a different kind of place in the world. So there can be quite big differences in attitudes between the younger, the younger folk, and the older folk over here. So um, what you can do now is go and do the quiz on this lesson and I'll see you soon. Bye.